or is in case my iPad fails, I have some papers for me. Uh, knowing that I will be probably one of the last speakers, I have to take the opportunity to thank you and watch Ambassador Moses, Irwin Kotler, and more especially Hillel Neuer, because this is an extraordinary experience for the people who watch this all over the world, and for you who are here present, because the, to see and to interact with so many defenders of democracy, freedom, human rights, and to interact with victims of gross violation of human rights is something I think is a big lesson there, that pains and sufferings of other people should never be foreign to you. In español sería que... The, the suffering should never be something that we are unaware of us. And this is what we're seeing today. We see this very clearly. I, I believe that many people in my country will not be able to understand that all in English. Translators. I'm sure you know, uh, is a word of I'm sure that you know the names Pablo Escobar and Chapo Guzman. The two are the most famous drug dealers in the world, one from Mexico and one from Colombia. With all their power, they were never able to govern their countries. But in Venezuela, their counterparts were able to. Why? in order to be able to destroy, devastate, and despopulate a country that was rich, free, and democratic. Nicolas Maduro and his wife, Celia Flores, and their two children have been sentenced by the United States for drug trafficking. The vice president, uh, the D minister of, of, of defense, uh, and other ministers and vice president, one of them, the most uh, wanted men in the United States, uh, Chapo di Soldado Cabello, all of them, all are sought by the European community and the United States. We're talking by a government, not even a regime, we're talking about a, a criminal corporation that has taken hold of my country. Why are we here today? I am one of the thousands of Venezuelans that have had to be exiled from my country because of a criminal government. I never imagined when I was at the Council of Security of the United Nations where I defended uh, uh, causes of humanity like Rwanda, I never imagined that one day I would be here in Geneva to help to document the cases against the criminal of my own country. In October of last year, in the General Assembly of the UN, a very shameful event took place. The criminal gang of Mandudo won votes uh, over the oldest democracy of Latin America, Costa Rica. And this regime was included in the Council of Human Rights for the second time. This criminal corporation should never have been able to join the Council of Human Rights because it was created to avoid Mad that Maduros of the world would be able to sneak in. This is not only my opinion, as you heard in the High Commissioner in the last, ref in, uh, in the last report, said that I call upon all of you, 5,000 people are suffering from human rights. And she said something even more important too. I call upon all of those of power and influence uh, within and outside of Venezuela 
to work together and to make the necessary compromises to resolve this all-consuming crisis. It couldn't have been cleaner. So the High Commissioner was not alone. There's not one organization that deals with human rights uh, that has not shown its solidarity with our cause. We have, have seen many cases. Some have been mentioned, but we have recent cases uh, that are horrible. They sound like the Khashoggi case, who was dismembered in the uh, consulate of, uh, of Saudi Arabia in Istanbul. We have a, a counselor who was thrown from the 10th floor, and the police said that he had committed suicide. It was Rafael Acosta, who was tortured for a week until he died of suffering. And, I, and Oscar Perez, with five of his uh, comrades who were slaughtered by 200 policemen and soldiers. This was all seen on television. We have, we've seen horrible uh, murders. It's gone beyond 10,000 per year. We, there have, we have so-called exemplary sanctions that are actually torture sessions. That is, men and women are tortured with the instruments to terrorize them. And we have the total cooperation with the C Cuban regime. Nonetheless, despite all of this and everything I've told you, next week in the building across the street at the Palais des Nations, the criminal corporation of Maduro will take one of the 47 seats at the Council of Human Rights. This is a sh shameful for the United Nations and is a harsh blow for those of us who believe in human rights. Who can we call upon as not the Security Council, because Russia and China will immediately veto any resolution about Venezuela, the International Court in The Hague? even less so. They've been studying all the documentation for more than two years. The six countries uh, have given information. The prosecutor have looked at this. Many countries have joined in, but they're not in any rush. And the pace of violence has not slowed down. You, I learned years ago that uh, that pain is not one-dimensional, that there can be other dimensions for other people. So, but I can't help thinking of what I lev lived through with the tragedy of the Muslims in Bosnia. I presided over the first, uh, one of the first meetings in the, council, in the Security Council. And we saw that the permanent members and the Europeans said that we needed to have a dialogue, that we needed to talk. And this reminds us what happened with the Second World War in Europe. Uh, they're very good at conversations. Uh, but not for their own problems. And then we had Srebrenica, and this took place in before the eyes of the world. They were, we were watching slow mo in slow motion genocide. And this was the first act of genocide after the Second World War. But the Europeans wanted to continue negotiating and while this happened, almost 300,000 Muslims were killed. 
and women were killed, and this became a state policy. But I am afraid that this is the same thing that's happening in our country. We knew that the international community was never going to intervene with their Serbs, and that's why they continued. And it's the same thing with Maduro. They think the same thing, that we will not, they will not be attacked, and nothing will happen to them, and therefore the tyranny will continue. We believe in we believed in the in for Yugoslavia that we should create a tribunal and the prosecutor have not shown any interest in showing in taking any action and when the international community has heard so much about my country. We know that the European community will continue to say that we have to continue talking, whereas my population considers suffering, whereas five million people have had to leave and more millions will leave. Can the Secretary General of the United Nations help? Uh, under the Charter, he should do so. And he should face up to the main powers of the Security Councils, because we have enough proof that this is a threat to the maintenance of peace and security. But he won't do so, because there is the longstanding tradition of not facing up to this kind of conflict. We talk about the parties in the United States, that victims and the perpetrators are morally put on the same footing. And this is what happens in the Security Council. And if we look at the Organization of American States, we see that power has ruled, not democracy. In a few days, there will be an election for the Secretary General, and a number of countries have sought to ensure that they will be able to overcome Almagro, because Almagro will be able to draw the attention of the Council to security issues, and they don't want him. But I want to tell you something frankly. I would be the first to celebrate the end of Maduro. We must do away with the repugnant presence uh, of the criminal corporation. Today we are formally beginning a campaign to put an end to Maduro and the, to suspend him from the Council of Human Rights at the United Nations, and we hope to continue and re revoke his credentials. But we're not naive enough to think that by doing this, the Council of Human Rights will create freedom in the country, but it's a very important step forward because we have 125,000 signatures and we have a criminal corporation like no country has never had a mafia or a gang like that that has taken over all the institutions in this way. I am very, I was very moved to hear Rosa's story. I knew about it. And it's, I think that cases like this ask us 
to show that we're being asked to give in, to give up, but we won't. I know that I am what I am because I'm Venezuelan. And I'm inspired to fight for the country. I am inspired by my fellow citizens in my country who don't even have the right anymore to dream. And this reminds me of Clag Havel, and who has said something very important for me. We shouldn't be afraid of dreaming the impossible if we want the impossible to happen. So this is our work before us today. Thank you.